There was supposed to be a ceasefire, but these latest videos show no pause to the war in the Sudan. Week we are learning new details about. We begin this hour in the African country of Sudan, where thousands of Americans are caught up in an escalating crisis. Indépendant Islamique République. The drums of civil war are banging in Sudan and the latest reports of bloodshed means it's already begun. This war will not end unless one of its parties is completely eliminated. That's the only way out of the situation. No mediation and no talks. Just complete defeat of one or the other. The conflict is very complicated. It's between two rivals who were originally partners, who know each other's secrets. It's between two forces within Sudan's military the Sudanese army and one of its own arms. Sudan is an important country, not just for the region but also for the world. Despite its poverty, Sudan is the third largest country in Africa, with an important strategic location as it has a long coast on the Red Sea, the main corridor for oil and arms market for the countries of the region and the world. Sudan also shares borders with all the countries bordering the River Nile. This reflects its regional importance. In addition to its richness in natural resources, they also have gold and lots of it, which explains why regional as well as international powers are showing concern for Sudan. Now let me give you a bit of recent history on some facts. Sudan used to be ruled by Bashir, a dictator. His regime fell in 2019 in the wake of popular so-called revolutions that called for democracy. And since then, Sudan has not enjoyed stability, neither security. Its economic situation hasn't improved. And according to figures from the World Bank, a third of the country today suffers from extreme poverty. Unemployment rate is high. Their currency is forever decreasing. After the so-called revolution, a transitional government came in and they were meant to govern for a period of three years in order to prepare for free elections, in which power was meant to be shared between civil and military forces. But that didn't happen. The military forces remained dominant in the country. Abdul Fattah Burhan, the army chief, headed the country's sovereign council and appointed his deputy, Mohammed Hamdan Hemeti commander of the Rapid Support Forces. The Rapid Support Forces are a paramilitary force and act as an arm of the army. And today, Burhan has a problem with Hemeti. Um, and as you probably saw, the Pentagon did announce that they are moving forward to pre-position some military forces and capabilities nearby just for contingency purposes in case uh, they would be needed for any kind of uh, evacuation. But again, no decision has been made on that. The focus right now is on urging both sides to stop this violence, to abide by a ceasefire, to allow humanitarian aid to get to people that are uh, that are that need it. I mean, there's already shortages of food. There's concern over shortages of medicine and water. Uh, the situation is dire in Khartoum, uh, and we continue to urge both sides now to stop this violence. Folks, wherever there's problems around the world, there's always the United States. It was the Americans who rewarded Sudan and began lifting economic sanctions against it. Sudan was also removed from the list of terrorism following the normalization of General Burhan's relations with the Israeli entity. Problems started in 2021. The transitional government run by Burhan maintained unilateral military rule on the country with the help of Hermeti. In 2022, the Americans and the collective West press for evidence from Sudan in respect to preparing for free elections. However, despite there being a transitional government, there was no transitional framework in place. This meant Sudan had no plans for free elections. So the Americans stopped providing aid to the country. It was at that moment the problem started to appear between the two military partners, Burhan and Hamidati. Because in order for some sort of democratic system to work in the country, it was vital to integrate the Hemeti forces into the army and then form a ruling civilian government. Hamidati was actually fine with this, but his demands were that the merger takes place over a period of time a decade at least. However, the Americans wanted to see integration within two years and they kept pressing for this, which put Burhan in a very difficult position. The problems that Sudan suffers today isn't just military control of the country, but it's more to do with the division of military power in Sudan between the two forces, the army and the rapid support forces. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil 
arming to threaten the peace of the world. If you remember, Sudan was one of the so-called axis of evil forces allied with Iran. It supported Hamas as well as Hezbollah. Sudan was also considered a direct enemy of Israel. However, all that changed very quickly. The shift in Bashir's policy from the alliance with Iran began in 2016. That's when Sudan started to approach Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. And of course, Sudan then normalized ties with Israel. In almost every single conflict out there, Israel is involved some way or the other. Sudan was rewarded by the Americans after normalizing its relations with Israel in the year 2020, lifting it from the list of terror. The developments of the Russian-Ukrainian war may also explain the current situation in Sudan, given the fact that the Americans wanted Sudan to focus on merging or disbanding the forces of Hemeti. If you didn't know, Hamid Ati has special partnerships with the Russian Wagner organization, which has commercial interests in Sudan, especially the gold market. And Hamidati is the most influential man when it concerns controlling Sudan's goal. The entire situation is messy and civil war has already begun. We at the Independent Islamic Republic feel sorry for the people of Sudan. It must be all too confusing for them. Nobody wants their own army to collapse, but it's very likely that this happens. Undoubtedly, the Americans want to see the defeat of Hermeti and expel the Russian forces from Sudan. So the battle will continue until its results are seen. And that is the liquidation of Burhan or Hermeti. It will be the people of Sudan who will pay the price for this battle from the blood of their own children. And it's the people of Sudan who will be the real losers in this war. Thank you for listening to the Independent Islamic Republic. We want peace, not war. Assalamu alaikum. Have a wonderful night.